Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Enter the Ether, the new podcast all about the upcoming third-person MOBA ethereal Clash of Souls. I'm your host, the one and only Mangoose. Joining me, as always, is my friend and co-host, Jelly Knees. How you doing, Jelly? I'm great, Mangoose. How are you doing, man? Doing well. And we've got a third person here this week, which is Yuji Psyonix, who is working on the uh, GDA team with Ethereal. Um, go ahead and tell us just what your kind of day-to-day operations are with Ethereal and what you mostly work on. Hey guys, like they said, um, I am Psyonix. I work on I work at the GDA department. Um, so as GDA department, we work with all of the numbers in Ethereal. Uh, we also do lots of the we also do lots of the kit designs. Um, it's mostly that, mostly just balancing and uh, kit designs. We make sure our primary goal is to make sure the game is fun to play, and that all of our characters are balanced and playable. So, so. if you hate a particular part of somebody's kit, I want you to send all of your hate mail to Psyonix ah. directly, <laughs> and you can say that Jelini sent you. Like that's fine. I'll take the blame. Fantastic. All right. <laughs> <laughs> We heard that you directly created the marksman passive. Is that right? So oh no, no, no! <laughs> I wasn't oh, even. Oh man! All right, I wasn't even around by the point that that uh, that, that passive was made. But let's let's make something perfectly clear here. I think that's a confirmation, Mangoose. So uh... yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, as you guys probably saw on Saturday, we had that um, sort of showcase exhibition match, whatever you want to call it where we did the all Dante, all mid. We're going to be talking about a lot about that today since we did get to see a lot of Dante's kit. And since we have a GDA with us, we're going to be talking about that quite a bit. I do want to emphasize, though, that was only a showcase. That wasn't the game. That wasn't even a lane out of the game. That was a map that they created in about a week. They pretty much created just a brand new game with their own assets just to support Extra Life. That's all that was. It is something to be excited about. I mean, of course, we got to see um, some gameplay, if you want to call it gameplay. And uh, it was it was a really good time, had a lot of fun. But I don't want people to misconstrue that as that being part of Ethereal. You're never going to see that lane set up in Ethereal. You're going to see a lot of those um, assets in there. But those minions were Paragon placeholder minions. Those aren't the Ethereal minions, all kinds of stuff like that. So uh, let's get into it. Um, Jelly, your impressions of the... Uh, of the test what do you what did you think man dude it was incredible um i was like a kid in a candy store playing playing it yesterday right it was just it's that for me it was kind of the realization of something that i've been dreaming about for two years um and being able to even though it was a very early adaptation with a handful of bugs that they said they've already worked out of out of the game already that they've found so many answers for and have already working on but it was still so much fun it was new it felt fresh but it, and it felt good to play and it was just all around enjoyable and psionix you were moderating in the uh in the chat the entire time uh, you you were answering probably more questions than we're getting uh answered on the actual <laughs> stream during the q a portion of that uh did you ever did you happen to get hands on on that that game mode did you get to play uh, at all I did not. Um, oh, I, I, no. I, it's okay. Over the past couple of weeks, I've had some some internet issues. Um, so I just didn't want to... I, I, I purposefully stepped out. Like, Mudd approached me, and she was like, hey, do you want to be a part of this testing? Um, but I purposefully stepped out. I was like, no, I don't want to be in the middle of the game and then have it crash because of my internet. Um, but moderating the chat was a whole lot of fun. I will admit my fingers hurt by the end of it. <laughs> But um, it was a whole lot of fun being able to see all of the all of the questions that came through, especially when that uh, that gameplay was shown. So I really I really enjoyed being there either way. So and yeah, I gotta admit I was completely checked out once the gameplay started. I wasn't uh, <laughs> I was barely looking at chat because I mean, look at what we were looking at. Look at what we were playing. It was gorgeous. Like uh, Dante's animations, the flow of his cape, the the lighting. That was oh the lighting. Just in different areas. Oh, it was amazing. Really, really good. Uh, Jelly, you were saying something? Uh, we did forget to talk about Extra Life and just the progress that they made on Extra Life. They did over 200% of their goal for their Extra Life stream as Undying Games. So congrats to you guys. And from my perspective, it looked like it was a very successful event, successful event for you guys. So congrats on that for sure. It was. I'm. I'm really glad. I'm really glad with the direction it worked. Mad props to our programming team, our level design team, who 
like they said, did that on the fly in less than a week. Um, I think this was our solid proof that Michael is in fact a robot, not a human being. <laughs> I have been told the man was up for 46 hours mm -hmm. trying to trying to get that ready. So I he can't be human. It's it's not possible. That's all the, he did it for the kids. It was for the kids. It for was the for kids. the kids. Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, and I felt like a big kid playing. That's for, that's for damn sure. <laughs> for I had sure. several people send me messages of, that I had this giant grin on my face the whole time. And I just didn't even recognize it. I was just in the moment, so <laughs> I, engrossed in the whole thing. I'll be honest, nobody could nobody could see my face, but I was I was grinning ear to ear <laughs> the entire time the gameplay is being shown. Everybody, everybody's excitement for the game, all of the questions, it it, it just made me so happy to finally to finally be able to show you that show show you guys in the community that we have been working super hard in the game and we're i'm so excited for everyone to get their hands on it i really am a lot of people have been losing faith saying that this game would never come out and that you guys have never shown anything solid or concrete and as i said this was not a proof of concept by any means however it was enough to really rekindle the spirit of the community absolutely i've that, talked to several people in the community already between yesterday and today and basically just said that what how what we've been saying about playing the game they feel the same way about just seeing gameplay they feel that it, it looked great it looked fun we were all having a great time so they're just excited to see that game progressing in a way that it feels tangible to them mm -hmm. for sure and yeah credit where credit is due Sionix. dante's kit was pretty damned cool especially his especially <laughs> well, I am talking. I am like a kid right now, <laughs> especially his Baschetti. No, especially his right click was um, just awesome. And we'll get to that here in a little bit. So you guys want to just get into it, start talking about Dante's kit and uh, talking about some of the design philosophy around that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I can. Um, so obviously I can't, I can't mention any specifics. I have been told I can't mention numbers or exactly how those abilities are supposed to function. I can tell you exactly how his kit came to be. Personally, I wasn't around when our first iteration of Dante's kit was. And by the way, that first iteration was not the, not the iteration that you guys saw. Um, I personally wasn't around when that first iteration was conceived. Um, I, I was there when some of the changes were made. Um, and a lot of, a lot of, uh, what goes into the myths kits revolves around um, what what is uh, what is needed for their lore, a little bit of their personality. We try to fit that into their kits, and of course, a lot of kits they they revolve around a theme. Of course, you know Dante's got his pew pews, you know different things like that. Um, but the other thing, but the other thing that a lot of people don't see behind the scenes is what we really believe the game needs. And in order to establish that, we have different um, different archetypes. So when we're when we're designing a kit, every kit has an archetype and a sub sub archetype. For example, Dante's archetype is gunslinger. He revolves around his pew pews, his auto attacks, right? So when we when we go to design a kit, we look at those archetypes. We look at okay, what does the game need right now? The game needs a burst assassin or an artillery mage. And we uh, we design a kit around that. Okay, so you're saying like you have marksman, you would have a gunslinger marksman and like a um, bow and arrow, like a ranger archer marksman sort of thing. Or I, I I can't recall I can't recall every every archetype that we have. Like I said, we have a big old list of archetypes that we all <laughs> that we always look at and we assign to different characters. It it helps us or it helps us organize all of the characters into uh, into a pool that we can then expand upon. If you know what I mean. So something you mentioned there was that the kit is usually based around the lore. Does that mean the lore comes first and then you design a kit around that? Or is it sometimes it's the lore first, sometimes it's the kit first, or how does that typically go about? So that's that's how it used to be. Sometime, um, some some characters would be like pure GDA, uh, pure GDA creation or... Um, like we we would go and we create the kit and and the character design, and then it got pushed over to art and the lore department. How we're trying to do it now is that we're trying to work as a more cohesive unit, um, 
So instead, we're going to create a very basic kit, um, basically saying like, this ability will fire a projectile that does this. And then we're going to hand it over to Art and Lore, and they're going to fit it as into the story as best they can. Okay. So that's that's something that's something new we're trying, um, in order in order to give lore and art that ability to to fit it better into the story. So you guys will give the functionality, and they'll give the uh, the appearance and the backstory and everything. And how that yeah. you guys give the you guys give the function, they give the form. Yep, that's what I was exactly. trying to say. <laughs> uh, like so I, like I said, sorry, like I said, GDA's revolves around made the game fun and functional. So uh, that's that's mostly what that's mostly with with the kit itself. We don't we don't deal with design the design aspect. I think his kit really did reflect his personality, especially with his voice lines, which I was surprised to hear voice lines in that um, little showcase that we did, but uh, they were awesome. They 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 fit in with his personality and his kit and his lore really really well. Um, the the main thing that I say like his right click let's let's go ahead and get into his right click okay. so his right click when you engage his right click you would fire bah, 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 like 10 shots or something like that like nine or 10 shots and then as soon as the but his his uh transmuters they're not guns they're transmuters but overheat he would have to drop his guns and shake his hands which was kind of hilarious and very much a dante sort of just ah you know sort yeah. of thing like he just goes all in with 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 with, with the pew pews and then just has the there's that drawback and you were completely silenced during that. You couldn't, it couldn't wasn't that you, attack, couldn't you couldn't abilities. use abilities. You couldn't use his role. Yeah. You couldn't honor, you couldn't use his role. I asked, I expected at least to be able to roll away, but I guess if your hands are burning, you're not thinking about, <laughs> you, can't, you can't roll on your hands. You know, you're going to roll on your hands. <laughs> burn dropping and rolling. You're going to hurt more. <laughs> but I mean, that was a, a really cool reflection of his personality and a really cool idea for his kit. Uh, Jelly, what did you think about that? It's a really great idea. It's very high risk, high reward in my mind. Um, kind of having the ability to fire all of these shots all at once. That's a, a lot of damage just very quickly. But then having the couple seconds afterwards where you can't do anything is a very like you need to secure the kill or secure that you're getting away with this ability in order to get the most out of it. And I think that that's such a cool dynamic of making the it's not just oh look i press right click i do damage it's more of a thought process behind the casting of the ability and i think that that's incredible i always love seeing counterplay in things right if that if you can do one thing there should be counterplay toward the opposite end and having a character have counterplay in and amongst themselves where the person using them gets to choose when that applies I think is a very cool idea. Yeah, I can definitely see an assassin, you know, observing, waiting, watching him fire that off, knowing that he no longer has that heavy damage that he could do really, really, really up close, and uh, and he can no longer roll away, and he can't auto, he can't do, he can't do nothing. He can't if if there's life still in the game, he wouldn't be able to life steal. Like that would be the time you go in. You see him use that, that's when you go. It's kind of like if you're Chimera. And you see Gideon uses portal. As soon as he uses that portal and you're close, you're like, oh, he has no escape. Time to <laughs> time to go. With Dante, you're like, ah, oh, he's shaking his hands around. He can't do shit. Time to roll. Time to get on him. Absolutely. And hopefully you have a good support with him. One Sorry, go ahead. I want to ask about that right click. Is is that something we're gonna see more often? Is about is it is having drawbacks on an ability something we can expect on more characters in Ethereal? Or is that more standard to just Dante. Um, I don't think I can quite answer that one yet. I think that one's a that one's a Owen knife question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I can feel him. He's not even here, but I can feel him breathing down my neck. I swear. If you guys were able to somehow work some sort of risk of reward system into each and every kit, oh, that would be the bee's knees. Yeah. I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> So, yeah, that would so be amazing. The rest, I do want to get into the rest of Dante's abilities that we were able to see last night. Um, and so, I mean, let's just start with his first ability. The one seemed to be some kind of long-ranged piercing shot that would go through multiple uh, targets that would deal damage to multiple. Um, Mangoose, what did you think of that? 
fun. It was pretty easy to hit. It was hard. It was easy to hit on minions. It was hard to hit on people. Um, if you guys didn't know, there was an they intentionally put a 100 millisecond delay into that um, play test. So we were at it had, had a little bit of lag that we were dealing with. So it was kind of hard to hit some of the abilities. That one, um, it wasn't that hard. It was just I, I can't aim for one thing, but it was it was a good ability for a, for an ADC to have. Uh, it lets you deal a little bit of damage to the front minions while still uh, still uh, getting that last hit on a minion that you, perhaps you can't quite get to with um with your basic attacks. I mean, it's a nice little addition to a uh, to an ADC kit, I think. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, Psionics, is there any? I don't know. Is there anything that you can give us more detail on for that ability other than what we've kind of just felt for ourselves? Um, so details are one of those things that I, I can't really delve into. Um, pretty much, pretty much what you guys saw is, uh, is what the ability is going to be. Dante's, Dante's kit through and through, um, it's, it's, it's really pretty, it's really pretty simple. Um, there's not a whole lot of, um, in depth. He's, he's meant to be that character that can guide new players into, the MOBA genre and more specifically the ADC role or the uh, carry role. Okay. Um, so yeah, he, th there's, there's not a whole lot of depth to his kit, um, but that's, that's definitely, that's, it's just a, yeah, it's his line ability. Yep. Basically what I heard there, Mangoose is if we can't figure it out, then we're idiots. <laughs> yeah. <no>, right. <laughs> um, I mean, another his basic ability we can just get into is his combat role. I don't yeah. think there's anything necessarily fancy about it other than it just is a quick dodge mechanic to get out of the way, which was very important for us yesterday with the remaining two abilities being his grenade and his ultimate, which we'll talk about the ultimate in a second. But the grenade, from what it seemed like to me, is you can vary the distance that it's thrown based on where you're looking, and it just does, like a grenade, an AoE damage field. Um, the... We had an interesting time with it that last night that it was one shotting people at the end of the game oh, yeah. that we could just lob yeah. a grenade out there and hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I know Kai said that that it, the damage numbers are by no means finalized, so that's not going to be a thing you can do in ethereal the the actual game itself. You're not going to be able to toss a grenade and expect to one shot somebody uh, with just that ability. So yeah, not not only are those numbers not finalized, um, I don't know if anybody knows this, but on top of making that entirely new map and and all of that stuff, um, Dante got an entirely new set of numbers for that event, as well as X, XP gold. All of that stuff was altered for that event, so it'd be a little so the the games would be a little bit more fast paced. Um, we could show off a lot more of the game without having to sit there and just farm for farm for several minutes straight so i mean yeah we got a lot like of those 10 minions to instant level 20 so it was <laughs> oh, yeah. great <laughs> oh yeah a lot of yeah a lot of those a lot of those numbers were altered very much so uh none of the numbers that you saw on there were final or even even close to what they're going to be in the in our final product all right, and then Mangoose, yeah. do you want to go over Dante's ultimate, which we had so much fun with yesterday? <laughs> oh, we did. We did. We had a great time with it. I do want to get back to the grenade and the roll in a little bit, but um, the 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 ultimate. So, <laughs> it's a, a lot of people were calling him last night. They were calling him uh, Twin Doc, Twin which Doc. I think yeah. was pretty yeah. funny because he has a, his right click is a you know a real quick fire, and then uh, his ultimate is pretty much long arm of the law. It was it traveled all the way across the screen uh, it was fast it was very impactful and we were calling it the base cannon because the uh the sound effect that went <laughs> along with it <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah it was it was a shocker to get hit by that sucker and it was uh it was fun watching it fly past you too <laughs> like oh thank god that didn't hit me mm -hmm. <laughs> so, oh yeah another ability that was one shotting us all last night mangus <laughs> congratulations by the way Getting the first spawn kill of Ethereal. Just that was the, waiting that was, for Evan I to spawn and just snipe them out of there. Just no big deal. Was, it, was, it was a dick move. It was a dick move. <laughs> Evan was um, very I, upset with you after this. Well, I, sp I spawned, and then as I was spawning, I saw him spawn. And I was like, oh, hey. <laughs> I have to I have to admit, during, during internal testing, that was one of the most satisfying abilities to use. It really yeah. is. Something that so something we talked you about, probably go ahead, Jelly. Something we talked about today, Mangoose, was 
seeing damage numbers come up when we used that ability oh, yeah. was like the greatest like return of satisf satisfaction <laughs> using that. You're just like, boom, and you see like 500 gold, 5,000 damage. You're like, yeah, <laughs> like that felt good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, something you probably, you guys, you, you're probably not going to be able to answer Psyonix, but uh, is there plans to make that go th through levels? Can you fire from one level through to the next level or? I, I, you're right. I cannot infect. Yeah, I figured, I figured we we're gonna get that. I don't know. I think it's pretty freaking obvious that it's gonna be able to go through pierce multiple layers of the map. You can't have an ability like that that already pierces stuff and goes at that long range on a on 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 a game where you have multiple levels. I'm personally gonna call it. Uh, UG's not confirming it. I'm gonna say that's definitely gonna travel through layers. And uh, <laughs> what, what what do you think, Jelly? I absolutely agree with you. It's either going to travel through lanes or be a one shot at close range. Uh, I'm willing to call either one. So, I mean, if you want to give me a one hit kill, I'll take that. You don't have to make it. If you want to make it a limited range and one hit kill. Oh, but uh, only Mangoose and I are allowed to play Dante. Uh, that's so. that's the, the uh, enter the ether exclusive character. Okay. Is that Okay. I see. Uh, one thing I wanted to get to about the grenade. Um, there was supposed to be a targeting reticle. Uh, it was not uh, in the game that we were playing. I I had it pop up once while I, while I was playing it. It was extremely helpful to have that. So if you were thinking, wow, how are they aiming those grenades? There's supposed to be an indication indicator for for the uh, where the grenades going to land, and I'm sure that'll be in the actual game itself. But it was not in the uh, play test. And the role, a question I had, I again, I don't know if you'll be able to answer this. Is his hitbox going to change when he rolls? Like, would you be able to roll under something that was aimed high at, like, at his head? So, I don't know about as much as can't answer as I'm not sure. Um, I think I think the safe bet would would be to say, for now, I can't say, but I really just don't know. Really, that that'd be much more programming. Um character design side so okay and can you roll in end, between grognox's legs <laughs> <laughs> towards the end of uh changing hitboxes and uh, abilities going above something that i noticed that it, it was very subtle and you wouldn't think about necessarily but we had all three degrees of aiming i could shoot straight up in the air if i wanted to whereas in a game like uh smite right it's just on a single plane it just goes outwards i can't aim upwards <laughs> which mm. I felt great. It didn't seem like there were any issues with, I could cast abilities upwards. I could do everything normal that was ranged in some way I could do in whatever direction I was looking, which was nice. For sure. So, um, you got to be able to snipe those sky slayers. Eh? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think we already answered that. I'm going through my questions right now. And uh, I think we already answered a lot of them there. Yeah. Something we did notice, but I, I don't know what it does, and maybe you can tell us, but I expect probably not, is there on the bottom left side, we had this these the guns, guns with the three bullets in the middle and then a number underneath. Can you give us any information as to what that means? Is that the marksman passive? Is that a Dante passive? Is that uh, anything? Nope. Yep, knew that was the answer. <laughs> no. no, I cannot. So all we get is what we can extrapolate I, from playing. Oh man, I'm gonna have to go yeah, back I through and look at my footage to see if that number moved or if those. From what I saw, I never saw it move at all. Mm, you probably uh, just weren't hitting shots. So, <laughs> wow. Okay, okay. <laughs> that's, that's, me. <laughs> the je jelly performed much better than I did. I, say, I believe I. Uh... <laughs> Did pretty well against you and Mud by myself. Yeah. Thank you. Well, yeah, Jelly, you did. me and Jelly already had already had the conversation about the top ethereal player in the game. So right now, uh, that's me. I'm just saying, I undefeated, <laughs> three win streak. I, you can't say that I lost. Yep. Mm, all right. <laughs> um, let me see. Lucky I wasn't in those anything tests. Anything else about his kit or what we saw that isn't map related that we can talk about? Turrets. That's a a great one. Were those turrets? Are those the expected look of the turrets in the main map, or were those just created for this map, if you can say I, so? Um, I'm not sure, but I believe those turrets were designed specifically for that map. Okay. okay. And there was something uh, Mangus and I talked about today, is the there was a ring around the turrets that was 
at least to me, to what I could see, is the range of the turrets. Is that something you're expected to have in the main game as well? Is rings on the ground determining where turret radius is? Yes. Yeah, I I do believe that is something that we want to okay, we yeah. want to have. Yep. I don't know. I don't know if what you guys saw was the range we're gonna have. I do know the the towers numbers were also altered as far as health goes. I don't know. I don't know um, or think that we altered its range. So. And speaking of tower health, Dante's right click did damage to towers. Is that mm, something? A lot of damage. Yeah. Is that something that we can expect in the in as a ability of Dante that he can use his right click to help burst down towers, or was that something that just hadn't been changed yet, or whatever you want to call it? Mm, I don't. I don't think I can. I don't think I can give you the answer to that one. I'm I think that really we just have to speculate on. <laughs> that's 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 perfectly fine but just expect lots of uh expect lots of not sures or no, you're fine. can't answer that one so um the the core at the end after you took down the tower was a big moving valkyrie is that uh something we could expect to see in game uh as far as something like that yes that specifically i don't believe so Okay, right and on. It did that, that was a lot of fun. Crazy amounts of damage, by the way. Like, and it had different abilities. Yeah. It wasn't just that it just walks up on autos. It had different ability. It felt like like an orb prime of a base. Like it was that I have yeah. to I have to destroy orb prime to win the game. Like it was <laughs> right? insane. Um in testing, Mangoose went behind there and was basically one v oneing him. And <laughs> died miserably because there was yeah. no chance like oh, yeah. it was it was insane <laughs> no give no give in that thing <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I died so fast i didn't even know what had killed me <laughs> they, they are brutal i don't um i don't know if their numbers were altered or anything um as with everything everything is subject to change so uh don't don't expect that that's that's how it'll be forever you're always going to get one shot by the final uh, base. Oh, yes, absolutely. Thing. So, uh, GG, you just can't win. There's no winning. Yeah. It's actually whichever team decides to leave first wins the game or loses the game rather than whoever battle. actually destroys the creature at the end. Battle of attrition, yep. <laughs> That's how all of our games will run. All right, let's see. Anything else you're, you want to ask Psionics while we have him here, Mangoose? I have some psionic specific questions, maybe not mm -hmm. about the... The um the play test or whatever we're, we're going to call it. Uh, out of all the classes, which is your favorite to work on as far as kits go? Like just your, you don't have to tell us about the kits or anything, but just which right. one's your favorite to favorite to, to work on? To work on um to work on most likely Reapers because throughout all of, I don't play League, but throughout all of the time I play Smite, um I've always been a jungle main, um and to mm -hmm. and to yeah. <laughs> and to add um to add the ability to um to go up down you know add that 3d add that um z axis it's it's my creative juices have been flowing man it's crazy so i'm not <laughs> saying he just confirmed reapers or junglers but yeah but but, but. <laughs> let me be perfectly clear i we um, I think I think this was talked about a little bit in the dev talk, but it'll really be the players defining defining the meta or defining mm -hmm. what they want to go. If if somebody wants to go on a on a standard team of you know, dueling has a cleric, a cleric or a berserker or whatever, and a support a support and a carry a mid and then and then a knight and then maybe two junglers. That that part's obviously up in the air because no other MOBA has ever done that. Um, but we also talked about if somebody wants to go to two clerics in that duel lane, if somebody wants to, if somebody wants to go three people in that duel lane, that is entirely up to them. I, We're just going to leave one lane abandoned and just five people or four people in the <laughs> duo lane, one person made and one jungler. The, that third you know lane what? is if just the junglers to free farm if they decide to. If that's how, if that's how you want to do it, more power to you. Um, <laughs> we really... This, could you imagine like, that? Like... Look at this crazy concept for a game. Let's go A Ram. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I mean, um, like I, I would love mentioned... to see Grace, Marina, and Nikolai all with a Dante carry and just mowing <laughs> down a lane. 
that for that for Elaine, that for Elaine. But uh, yeah, like I believe we mentioned in the dev talk, um, we just we as a GTA department just want to make sure that no character is too oppressive or too powerful and no meta is too oppressive or too powerful that you have to go you have to go that specific meta otherwise you can't you can't play the game so, so that towards, is a really oh, only no that's really our only goal um towards that end are you expecting that that once the player de players define a meta let's say it's 212 and one jungler um are you expecting that both sides of the map be let's call it red and blue side the two separate teams are both going to run that 2121 or is it going to be that one one team decides to run 2121 and then the other team decides to go 1131 is that something mm -hmm. you think is theoretically possible for the two teams to actually decide two different forms of play but still be balanced against each other or do you expect everybody to play, kind of play the same structure uh, theoretically, absolutely anything is possible. Really, um, the one thing, the one thing that I, um, that I've mentioned to just about everybody that's asked that the primary question has been, how are you balancing the game before the game has even come out? Like as as you're testing, how are you how are you balancing the game? And my answer to that every time is that we can balance it all we can. We can look at numbers. We can do the math. But at the end of the day, the one thing that we cannot uh, that we can never really take into account is that human factor. Mm -hmm. What what the players are going to do once they get their hands on the game. So that's when that's when GDA department's job is really going to start when people start getting their hands on the game and start defining metas. Um so yeah, it's the human it's the human factor that we as a GDA department can't we we can't take account for. Because okay. humans humans are weird. Humans do weird things. So. <laughs> Man Goose and I will create our own meta. It'll be the Jelly uh, Goose meta, <laughs> and we'll just... If you're not playing the Jelly Goose meta, you're not playing the game right, okay? Fantastic. All right. <laughs> Let's see it. What's the hardest part of uh, game development so far for you? Uh, for me as a GDA member, it's been... Uh, so far, just without starting... I feel kind of repetitive saying it, but it's it's not it's not having the whole community playing the game. It's it's having mm. to it's having to balance the game without having it. It's like it's like having a job in analytics without having any data to go off of. Yeah, is is the best way I can describe it because we don't we don't have any data outside of the internal testing that we've done. So. I want you, you to know, balance my checkbook, but I'm not going to give you any of the things that I'm I not, bought. Yeah, I'm not going to give you. I'm not going to give you any of my. I'm not going to give you any of my ionized. I'm not going to give you any of my paychecks. <laughs> and I want you to try and figure that out. Perfect. Well, well hopefully you know, your job will get much design. easier and much harder as uh, a. I expect game goes along. I expect it'll get easier in some places and much harder in other places. Yeah. Yeah. You're hearing from the whole community saying that Dante one-shotting people with his ultimate is uh <laughs> <laughs> the amount the amount of Dante 2 OP memes I have seen is it's not the best. <laughs> Just be glad there's not an ethereal subreddit yet. That's where all the um, Dante 2 OP memes would show up. Oh yes, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Let's see, is there anything else, Mangoose, that you have for psionics here? Uh, I think that's it for me. You got anything? I think that's it for me as well. Psionics, any final final comments, final statements? Oh, actually, I, um, I have I have one oh, more thing. Oh, 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 here we go, Jelly. All right, so, what you got? theoretically, we're going to be on the 6v6 map sometime soon TM. So, we're going to have all of the characters out there. We're going to have Berserkers, Clerics, Marksmen, uh, Archmages, Reapers, Overseers, in theory, and the last class that I can't remember, Knights. Um, and so with all of those having their own unique class abilities and all of that, I just wanted to know when the game was going to come out. Soon TM. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> good try, Jelly. Kidding. Wait good a try. second. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on. We might get an answer here. <laughs> like everybody has been saying, um, and, and like I've been told, we are still on course for, for something to release by the end of this year. Or shortly, shortly after the end of the year. All right. 
So that's that's what I've got for you. That's more of an answer than we've gotten in a year. <laughs> yeah, I, I, a year. I, I've just been. I've just. I just told you pretty much what everyone is. What everyone's. What everyone uh, told everyone in chat yesterday on yeah. the dev stream. Mm -hmm. What we've been telling people for past monthish now, I believe. Coming is, around is, there. is when yeah. is when we st is when we set that goal. All right, All right now psionics. Any any yeah. final final comments statements? Um, I can't wait to see what y'all do with the game. What metas you define? Um, I can't. I really can't wait to. I really can't wait to play with y'all on that that ether. I'm I'm very 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 excited um, to see what y'all do with the game and what how many hours of pain and misery you're trying to balance Dante. You're gonna make me go through, but I am ready. <laughs> As is the rest of the team. Um. Thank you, thank you both so much for having me, though. I appreciate it. Oh, thanks for coming, man. We are we're the ones that are appreciative here. Absolutely. So uh, I, just, I guess I'm just I'm just glad to. I I feel like well, one more thing. I just feel like um. Me personally, I don't know about you guys, but when I think about game devs, I think these gods in the sky that are that that come down from the heavens and like, hello, child. I am here to update Ethereum. <laughs> Um, personally, and I know, I know mud and a few of the mark of the marketing members share my, share my sentiment here that we, we want to, we want to try and avoid that as best we can. We want to show that we're, we're gamers just like everybody else. We we're going to enjoy the game. Um, just like everybody else. I, I, I really want to personalize UG and, and, and show everyone that, that we're working hard and that we're humans just like everyone else. So. Right on. Good to go. So plugs, Jelly, you got anything to plug? Uh, same as usual, twitch.tv slash jellynees, but also I'll have a bunch of videos coming out about the tests we had this weekend throughout this next week. So make sure to go get scribed to my YouTube for that, which is you jellynees. That's the same as everywhere else. Uh, anything for you, Cyanox, that you want to plug? Uh, go check out jellynees and mangoes. That's that's it. <laughs> you, you stream sometimes though, right? I have a, I have, I do have a Twitch channel. I, <laughs> I have streamed. I can count it on one hand the amount of times I have streamed on this Twitch channel. I don't know. Maybe, maybe when uh, pre-alpha release comes out and the NDA or not pre-alpha release. I apologize. I don't think we'll be able to stream pre-alpha. But when when I am readily able to, I'm I may stream Ethereum. We'll see what happens. Okay. When he's ready, right ready to try and take my throne as the best ethereal player in the oh, world. Oh, right you just wait. That's gonna be that's gonna be long before we can stream. Oh man. <laughs> the jelly the jelly psionics rivalry continues. Oh, man, oh shit. <laughs> right on. Uh I think that's gonna wrap it up for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys uh breathed a little sigh of relief once you actually saw some gameplay from material i know i did i was even even i was getting a little bit of nerve a little bit nervous not seeing gameplay for so very long but then actually being able to get my hands on it and play it it's amazing it was so much fun there's been so much care put into everything and just i think it all it sums it up with the right click i mean that's just some, something so different and unique that there's such a high risk reward ability tied to our marksman i just Really enjoyed that. Really enjoyed the game overall. But uh, yeah, this is uh, Jelly Knees and Psionics and the Mangu signing off. You guys have a good one. Mangu!